SSDs in the DNS security protocol are now supported in the Windows 7 platform. Now, network access protection is another piece that we've had in the platform since the Windows Vista timeframe. Well, that's still there in Windows 7 so that organizations can ensure that machines that connect to their infrastructure meet corporate policy and that they're fully patched, they're up to date with virus protection and, and all the other things that go into making sure your organization stays secure. The last piece is direct access. It's a new paradigm for allowing seamless connectivity for the remote and mobile workforce. And it's really this big innovation that I want to talk to you about. Because the situation today is, as users roam around and are mobile, um, it gets difficult for them to, to have a seamless experience while they're on the road. Now, I've had the ability to read my mail through Outlook for quite some time now. So when I'm you know, at home at night, it's easy for me to keep up with all the email I get. But like a lot of other folks, I get emails that have links to things inside of the corporate network and I have to get access to those. Or maybe there's a website that I need to get to to, to, do, to deal with a line of business application. Well, I have to start to make a decision. Is this, a, this something I'm going to do now and I'm going to go instantiate my VPN and go ahead and take that kind of hit in my productivity and that disjoint you know, behavior? Or am I going to you know, just worry about it later? Well, honestly, I worry about it later. But with direct access, I get seamless connectivity whenever my machine's connected to the internet. And this is great in two ways. First and foremost, anytime my machine is on with direct access and connected to the internet, the IT department has full access to my machine. So when I turn it on, I get an IPsec tunnel created between my machine and the corporate network. As a result, IT can go out and look at my machine and remediate it in case it's not up to date. And for me as an end user, my benefit is, I get a seamless user experience, so my desktop and my corporate assets look to me at home or when I'm on the road, just like if I was sitting at my desk. Now, this works in conjunction with components in Windows Server 2008 R2. So this is a great together, better together story for Windows 7 and the new version of the operating system on the server side. Now, when we look at how do we protect users and infrastructure as well, there's three main things I want to talk to you about. First is AppLocker, the ability to control applications that run within a corporate environment. The second is Internet Explorer, a lot of great innovations in Internet Explorer 8. And I hope that you take the time to check out some of the other videos around that or hit the website to learn more about IE8 because there's a lot of great security things there that you really want to become familiar with. And finally, you know, a lot of the data recovery things that we've done in the Windows Vista timeframe remain. Things like volume shadow copies to make sure that data is available, even if it's accidentally deleted or, or corrupted on a disk. But the big thing I want to talk to you about is application control and app locker. We talked earlier about UAC and getting folks to run as a standard user. Unfortunately, running as a standard user, it's a great first step, but it's not enough. As a standard user, I can still download malware. And if I'm the CEO of an organization and I download a piece of bad code, it doesn't have to run in the system context to get access to all the data and applications and resources that I, as a CEO, may have access to. So on Windows 7, we've introduced a new technology called AppLocker to help IT eliminate unknown and unwanted applications within their network. And it helps enforce standardization and the nice thing is it's really easy for IT to configure through group policy objects. And I can simply create rules, either allow lists, you know, whitelisting, so I can specifically say, here's all the things that I want to run in my environment. You know, optionally, I could also use blacklists if I wanted to, to deny certain things to run within my environment. But the real innovation here is I can use now publisher rules, which are based on digital signatures. So now I can start to look at trustworthy publishers and decide based on a publisher whether or not I want to have that application run in my environment. So I can start to create rules with single English sentences like allow the Microsoft Office Suite, if it's greater than version 12.0, to run in my environment if it's digitally signed by the Microsoft Corporation. And the great thing is, is, as Microsoft releases patches, I can deploy those in my environment without having to update my rule sets. And as such, they're not as brittle as some of the other rule types that a lot of other products use on the marketplace. The last thing that we've really focused on in Windows 7 is helping protect user data. 
making sure that as an IT organization you have control over the data in your organization and the ways that your users utilize it. And that really starts with RMS, the Rights Management Services. Being able to control the types of things that you can do with a document. You know, the Office Suite is fully integrated with RMS, so I can control whether or not someone can print the document, copy things from it. I can even have it expire. I also have the ability with EFS, or the Encrypting File System, to ensure that files or folders on my machine are encrypted and protected against, you know, administrative access. But the big change is in BitLocker. So BitLocker was introduced in Windows Vista timeframe. And it was really about helping protect the operating system volume of a machine. And in Service Pack 1, we added additional support for any of the fixed data volumes that also have to be installed on that machine. But there were some challenges for IT organiz organizations around the dual partition configuration needed. A lot of organizations deployed BitLocker with a single volume. And over time, as the operating system ran and was used, that volume would have lock files placed across the entire span of that disk volume. And it became really hard for them to shrink partitions and create a small volume and get that dual partition set up they needed. It also required users to go to the control panel to get to information. So not really friendly from an end user standpoint. And IT organizations told us loud and clear that they thought it was great that we were protecting the laptops, but what about USB sticks, small ubiquitous things that we all have? I know I personally carry about a dozen or so of those in my laptop bag at all times. And the reality of the situation is if I lost my laptop or it was stolen, I'd know pretty quick because I carry around a big seven and a half pound laptop and I'd notice that, that wasn't in the bag. But if a USB stick fell out of my bag, I'd have no idea because they're really small, really light, and it may be days, weeks, or even months before I realize it's gone. So Windows 7 enhances BitLocker and allows us to now protect removable storage devices. We've done this by extending BitLocker to support um, all the FAT star file systems. And so on any USB stick, I can use BitLocker to go now to protect my data and I can do that either with a password or optionally, I can use a smart card as well. And the nice thing is, I can actually have my machine remember the fact that, remember my password for that volume and store it within my profile. So that anytime I use a protected BitLocker stick, it works just like any other stick I have today, but it's still BitLocker protected. You know, the other thing I should really mention, because a lot of folks ask about, is with a BitLocker to go protected USB stick, I can also take it down to a Vista or an XP box. We have what's called the BitLocker to go reader, which allows down level read only access to any of the data that I have within my USB stick with maybe some partners or other people that I need to share this information with that aren't yet running the Windows 7 platform. And it's really that secure sharing that is enabled through BitLocker to go. So that's a lot to cover in a really short amount of time, and I've hit just the tip of the iceberg. So I really hope that you spend some time getting to know Windows 7 and the security features that are in it, and you spend some time going out and looking at all the great resources we have available for the Windows 7 security stuff that are out there. But just kind of quickly in recap, just remember that Windows 7 is built upon those secure foundations of Windows Vista. And we've done a lot to unlock user scenarios around the mobile workforce, in protecting infrastructure and also roaming data on USB sticks. I thank you for your time today.